some of some of the blame has to be, you know, put on our doorsteps. We are, for example, energy and transportation. Some of it is is our own arrogance and our own so in love with SUVs that we say it's our right. It's our God-given right and our American right to pollute and to drive our SUVs. Not I'm not singling anybody out. But understand what that means is that that because of our wasteful energy policy, it means that we're going to have to fight more wars for energy on the pretense of something else. So it means that we, we are such a large footprint and that for the most part we have not changed. You know, even, even when we talk about gasoline, $3 a gallon, oh, it's so high, it's so high. But have we changed? Well, we may, may not make that extra trip or we say, well, I'm not going. But for the most part, we have not changed, even with $3 a gallon. And so when we talk about our own energy policy and our own industrial policy as it relates to uh, the fact that 60% of energy used in this country is used in transportation. That's a huge, that's a huge part. So it means if we would develop alternative fuels and alternatives to driving, we could have a big impact. But because it's so difficult to get people out of cars, because there are very few alternatives to getting people out of cars in terms of transportation in most major cities, with the exception of a few, such as New York, for example. It doesn't, it, you must be crazy to own a car in New York. There are a few people. But the fact is that there are, most places you have to have a car to get to where you need to get to.